Welcome everyone. We are glad that you can join us today for our virtual visit with communication, digital media, and public relations at Carthage. My name is Ashley Hansen. I'm the Associate Vice President for Admissions and Financial Aid. We wish that we were able to welcome you in person, but until we are able to do so, we are glad that you are taking advantage of the numerous virtual events that we have to offer. Today, we have some of our expert faculty members from the fields of communication, digital media, and public relations. They are gonna share with you what the students are doing with, within the major, their teaching methods, and then at the end of their presentation, we will open it up to question and answers. If you're new to webinar, you are welcome to use the chat feature, which is located at the bottom of your screen. Within the chat feature, that is a public chat feature, or you can also use the question and answer tab as well. But we will be going through all of your questions at the end of the presentation. This video is being recorded and will be placed on our website after the event today. You know, that way you can reference it later or you can share it with family and friends. We can't wait to welcome you on campus in person, but we're so glad that you are joining us here this afternoon. So I will turn it over now to our professors, our faculty within the department. Um, so just bear with me one moment. Welcome everyone. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hello. So I'm going to take take it and start off here. I'm excited to see a couple people I know in the attendees. So hi, Alyssa. Hi, Maddie. I'm glad you guys are here. Um, I'm going to start by talking about graphic design. I'm Professor Laura Haracha. I'm an associate professor here, and I teach graphic design and photography classes. So um, I'm going to, all right. So I wanted to explain a little bit first about our department. You know, we're very in, much inclusive. We like to say, write, speak, create, find your voice in communication and digital media. And that's what we hope you do when you come to us. Um, in graphic design, which I wanna focus on, I wanted to just to mention a couple courses um, that you get to take. Um, the requirements within graphic design, launching into that. We also now uh, have a graphic design, we can have a graphic design minor too, and we're gonna go over some of the minors later on. So some of the exciting classes you get to take, you know, starting off with like human communication and public speaking, and visual communication, where you get to start creating um, an Adobe Illustrator and Photoshop. And then uh, introduction to two-dimensional design, which is in the art department. So, so going through all this list of classes, you'll see um, how you'll be building your portfolio and working towards getting a lot of good skills. So I wanted to show you a couple examples of how you would get those skills and how you would end up. And I wanted to show you some senior portfolios. So this is Aly Alyssa's with Alyssa's work. As you can see, she has a variety of pieces um, with her work, um, ranging from prints to animation to animated GIFs, um, working with vector images, building a bunch of different um, pieces with typography, um, this is the improbable poster they do in graphic design one. So you can see the beautiful imagery she's created there. She created this really cool poster, um, Instagram posts for my history of graphic design class. So it was like showing the beauty of letter forms through a, a exhibit for the Museum of Contemporary Art. So that's kind of what this is showing here. Um, so getting a body of work such as this, that's what you're going to end up with when you come here. Oh, this is another project she's working on right now for history of graphic design the final that she has um, next week. Um, so leaving with a variety of work, leaving with um, a variety of skills um, is what you can have. Um, this is another designer, Paula's, Paula's website, um, showing a variety of her publication work, her work on the currents. So, you know, working on campus is another example of how you can make some money and do some different things on campus. Um, how design live wire she did that for typography class so they created an original um, piece for how to design um, live and here's some packaging she did for rebranding dove so all of this works accumulates into their senior show so their senior show is usually usually 
um, a big fancy art walk that we get to go and have the work on campus. So I wanted to show this picture of examples of when the art walk is live. Um, when we get to do it live, they put out their work, they have their portfolios out and everybody gets to come around. But now we are having this awesome Instagram show. All right, so this Instagram show is not quite live yet, but wow, it's gonna be amazing. You can have snacks at home um, and this is gonna be all their work and when it's live, we can share that with you later on. So I don't wanna take up all the time. Um, I wanna show you a couple other things um, with graphic design and then I get to move on to my esteemed colleagues. Um, so let me end that and just show a slideshow. Um, just to show, I showed the senior show, I showed their work. Um, I wanted to mention a couple of fun classes, uh, uh, a class called Photographing Nature that I teach and I get to take students to, I took them to Arizona and now I take them to Costa Rica. So it's a total bonus to get to take such wonderful pictures the amazing sloth as chill as possible. Um, it's a great experience to learn photography and take a non lab. And that is a Costa Rica um, course that I teach. Um, and I wanted to mention draft, which is the graphic design group. And this is some of the work that they do. So the graphic design group on campus, they meet um, every other week and they design work together. And then they sell these posters, they have a poster show that they make as part of the art walk. And they also have a, a gallery exhibit uh, once a semester. I wanted to mention really quickly a bunch of alumni that we have um, in graphic design. I think there's some calm um, alumni in here. So these are jobs that people have had um, from leaving Carthage and they keep in touch with us. So a lot of different opportunities, a lot of different awesome students, alumni getting jobs. And recently we've connected them with our ongoing students so that they can make connections for networking um, with students now. So I took up too, way too much time. Um, this was students work and they love making vector artwork. So I just encouraged them to make a whole ton of vector artwork. So I just wanted to show that as um, we encourage what you love. All right. So um, I think Jose is here. I think I saw Jose in there somewhere. If Jose is here, I can stop presenting. If Jose wanted to talk about web, I thought I saw he was in here. Um, Jose? Hello, Jose? No? Okay, maybe not. So now we're gonna talk about public relations. So. Colleen, would you tell us about public relations? Yes. Hi, everyone. I'm Colleen Kapler, and I teach public relations at Carthage. Um, so mostly, uh, I don't have all the fancy slide presentations like Laura had, um, but I wanted to talk to you a little bit about what we do in public relations and what it is, because not everybody's familiar with what does public relations mean. So part of the thing that I absolutely love about PR and I love teaching it um, is the fact that PR public relations is about working with people. So we're building bridges between businesses or between businesses and their publics or between um, celebrities and their publics. Um, but no matter how we do it, we're looking at people. And so we're really bringing in a few different elements into public relations, which are the study of communications, which is why you take a lot of communications classes when you're doing public relations, major or minor. Um, you, we definitely look at psychology and we look at sociology as well as to how people think, how they perform, what drives them, what motivates them. So I find it just a fascinating field and the fact that it brings in all these different elements. And so it's, you know, we're not like just with one area, we're really looking at quite a few different areas. Um, another great thing about public relations is that there's always something new to handle. There's new crises all the time. And which of course you've seen plenty of, I'm sure during the COVID crisis, um, how businesses handled the COVID crisis, how they're gonna handle coming out of it, uh, anything like that. But there's constantly new things happening within the business world um, and within celebrities and organizations like that that need nonprofit organizations are included in that uh, that need public relations in order to make those connections with the community. So it's really about building relationships between, again, the business and the public, famous people in the world, organizations and their publics. Um, we're in the business of persuasion in public relations. So we're really working on persuasion and on being a storyteller. So good writing and good speaking skills are absolutely a must. Um, and that's where our communication background comes in with public relations. We also work on crisis management and we do a lot of looking at both traditional and social media, how they operate, how we can utilize them to the best of our advantage to get out to the public, that kind of thing. One of the really interesting things about public relations is the fact that it is one of the nation's fastest growing fields. 
So I like to throw that out there. Um, so a lot of schools are starting to incorporate a public relations department within their school. And I think it's really great because Carthage is already established with our public relations department. Um, so not only do we have a public relations major and minor and a strong department of classes, uh, but we also have a PR SSA chapter that's the Public Relations Student Society of America. And that offers things like mentorships, um, internships, networking, jobs with public relations people from all over the country, but especially focused in the Milwaukee, Chicago area, because that's where we're located in that corridor. Um, so as far as classes go, there's a variety of classes that you take in public relations from an intro to the classes uh, to senior seminar when you write your thesis. But a couple of my absolute favorites are PR writing. Um, so that is where we actually work with a local business and we get to count it as an internship on our resume because we actually do the PR writing aspect for the local business so that we can practice the skills that we're learning in the classroom. And another one is a new class that we offer now called crisis communication, which really looks at how do we handle crises when they come up um, within different organizations and what is the methodology for handling that and how do we get the word out there to help save the company once mistakes have been made or something bad has happened. So as for our alumni, they've gone on to do amazing things like working with the Boston Red Sox, United Airlines, being party and wedding planners. Um, all kinds of things, and I'd be happy to, to share some of that as well. So I think that that is probably my allotted time. Um, so if you have any questions later, just let me know, and I'll pass it on to communication. Thanks, Colleen. I'll jump in. Hi, everybody, and welcome. Um, I'm Lynn Brownson. I'm chair of the department and also an associate professor of communication. A um, couple things that I wanted to highlight. Uh, in addition to the minors that we already offer, <clears throat> rolling out this year, we have new minors, one in photography and one in film and new media. These are strong collaborations, interdisciplinary collaborations uh, between the CDM department and the art department. So we're really excited about having those launching this year. We've also got um, a minor in graphic design that's in the pipeline. Uh, and should roll out very shortly. So we're really excited about that. This allows students the opportunity to um, explore other avenues, but also find what we think are unique and powerful ways to use everything that we talk about across the disciplines within our own single department, and certainly with, you know, with collaboration of our colleagues in, in art department and others, oh, and computer science and the others as well. Um, I would just like to take a moment to uh, promote shameless self-promotion. Um, two new courses that I'm rolling out next semester. One is leadership and small group communication. Um, we're excited to be offering this. Um, there are other leadership courses on campus. We're going to focus specifically in the communicative roles that leadership plays and how that functions within small groups, work groups, social groups, community groups, et cetera. So I'm excited about that. Before this COVID thing happened, um, I was also putting forward a new course in health communication. Um, I can't think of a more timely circumstance where these kinds of things will be needed and continued research. And so health communication is anything health field related, that is communication between um, care providers and patients, patients and insurance companies, insurance companies and publics, public health issues and campaigns, the use of media, the use of technology, telemedicine. I recently had a doctor's appointment over Zoom with my doctor. This is the world we live in. Um, and so it'll be interesting to to roll in some of the new research that we're going to see coming out of these particular circumstances we're, we're experiencing today. Um, communication is a very broad general area with many sub-disciplines and expertises. So I'm going to turn it over to my colleagues to talk a little bit more about their particular um, areas in communication. 
John, do you want to go next? Sure, I'd be happy to. Thank you, Lynn. Uh, my name is John Bruning. I teach also in the Communication and Digital Media Department. Um, I teach mostly media studies courses, also a little bit of social media and journalism as well. Um, I also teach a few other kind of things in the department. As Lynn said, it's a very broad department with a lot of different areas. And so uh, I also teach intercultural communication as well as political communication. Um, actually, next fall during the election, we're doing a, a campaigns and elections course. Uh, I'm team teaching it with a member of the political science department. We always do it every, every presidential election year. I think I'm already starting to see the presidential campaign commercials. Uh, so it should be another interesting year for, for that course. So that's another thing that I teach. Uh, I think the thing I'm probably, I just wanna highlight a couple of things that I do real quick. Um, I think the thing that I do uh, probably that's most popular is sports media. Um, that's a, a, an interest of mine, both from a teaching perspective, also uh, I do a little sports writing uh, myself as well. Uh, so there is a sports media course every uh, year, almost every year uh, in the department uh, that you can take, which covers sports marketing, sports PR, uh, as well as sports journalism. I also do a couple of uh, study tours. I'm sure you've heard about J-Term. Uh, I do a European soccer trip. That's what these scarves behind me are, are from, uh, uh, souvenirs from those trips. I also do a baseball version of the trip. Uh, that does the California Major League Baseball Park. So I do that one uh, on alternate years. So that's another kind of exciting and fun thing uh, that you could possibly get involved in. If you're interested in sports media, we do have a lot of interesting things, exciting things happening in that area in particular. Um, we have some internships that we've established with different uh, television and radio stations in, in sports media that are really effective. And we're also starting to work a little bit, I don't even think my colleagues know this, but I'm going to be teaching in the uh, the master's uh, sports management program starting next year. So we're gonna have some nice um, combinations, I think, with, uh, with the new sports management uh, MBA program at Carthage. And uh, we're already kind of looking at some interesting partnerships with people that are working for uh, some of the professional teams in Chicago and Milwaukee. And so I'm really excited to be uh, a part of that too. So uh, it's an exciting time, I think, for, for sports media uh, at Carthage and for CDM at Carthage as a whole. Um, the last thing I'll just mention real quick before I pass it over, I do also uh, advise their honorary chapter for communication students. That's called Lambda Pi Eta. Uh, Dr. Brownson has been the, the able uh, leader of that group for many years, but I just took it over this year. Uh, it's affiliated with the National Communication Association. Uh, it is a great resource professionally. We really trying to, our project um, this year is trying to really connect with alumni. So. Uh, trying to open up those avenues for people to find jobs after they uh, finish. So that is an opportunity. We do have, as uh, my colleagues have mentioned, we have those honorary societies in each one of the three majors. Um, but I'm going to turn it over to our most exciting and newest professor, uh, Nicholas Polarski, uh, for some more information about communication. Uh, hi, everyone. Um, so I uh, teach uh, moving image within the department of uh, film, new media. Um, and we like to have an incredibly holistic approach in how we think about communications, how it functions. Um, so that begins uh, with like a very embodied understanding. So, you know, how do you actually speak to each other in, in person, but also how does that work when it moves into the digital age? And as we all know, we're uh, trying to all figure this out as a society right now. Um, roughly 82% of all in the internet bandwidth that will be consumed uh, within the next five years uh, will be moving image in some way, shape or form. Um, and there is an incredible amount of jobs that are going to be growing from this. Um, and what we try to do uh, holistically as an entire program is attempt to prepare you uh, for that future. So what does that look like? Um, you learn the traditions. Uh, of film and new media, uh, but making traditional films, learning about audio, broadcast, podcasting, et cetera. Um, but we're also trying to think of what the future of this field is going to be. Um, so we have a lot of connections there. Um, we're working uh, uh, with uh, a company called Scatter, uh, which was the first uh, virtual reality um, company in the world uh, to win an Emmy. Um, they uh, have given our program, along with Johns Hopkins and MIT, access to software that is taught nowhere else. 
Um, so our department teaches this. Um, uh, our students go on as uh, so we've had students to work uh, work in CNN at CNN. Uh, we've had uh, students while students at Carthage uh, have their films shown at uh, international film festivals. Um, and uh, it's pretty uh, exciting from from our perspective. Um, I think at the end of it, uh, our job uh, is to make sure that you as a student accomplish three things. First, we hope uh, that you come out of Carthage knowing what you want to say. Second, uh, we hope that we give you all of the tools so you can articulate that for what the future is going to be. And third, uh, we want to prepare you for those jobs that are going to be moving into the future and those jobs that you have to be competitive for. And uh, we take a lot of care and a lot of time in trying to cultivate that in you uh, and uh, creating conversations that are dynamic uh, and allow you to, to end up going into the world the best you can be. Um, so uh, with that said, uh, I'm going to um, turn, uh, I think it over. Is there anyone else? I'll, who... I'll take it over for Jose because he just messaged me that he's having some connectivity issues. So I will try to be as eloquent and hip as Jose is. Um, he was going to talk about internships in within graphic design. So um, we have a variety of offerings um, between Milwaukee and Chicago and the alumni we have. We have a lot of internship opportunities that we have connections with already. So we encourage um, in graphic design in all majors and internship, but we really push it. We used to say at least one, but now I would encourage more than that. I had a student who had up to five one time um, and she did really well. She just spread out her internships. It was great for experience. Um, I know we have some awesome connections and that's a, that's a great thing to move forward with and pursue. Um, I also wanted to talk about the web offering. So uh, Jose Montoto, who, who can't talk right now, he is our main web professor and he teaches, it's amazing to know web design and the amount of jobs out there, the amount of need for HTML coding, especially now, I think we're gonna have to rely on that even more, um, looking into that. And we have a, another web design teacher who is an alumni that is one of the best coders and designers in Milwaukee. Um, so he teaches our web two classes. So it's great to have him on board. Um, we also, I wanted to mention motion graphics, just as uh, Nick was very eloquently talking about um, the importance of motion. Um, Jose teaches motion graphics class as well in the J term, as well as a letterpress class where you get to learn this beautiful art of using a letterpress and laying out uh, metal type and being able to create artwork with that, which I want to take that class. Honestly, I hope Jose, since he can't talk, he'll just let me in that class. Um, so there's a variety of opportunities um, such as that for J term and all the classes and as you can tell, we're all pretty excited to have you guys um, if you're coming with us to an adventure in communication and digital media. As, as Lynn is saying, please come on down. Um, usually Lynn's cat jumps in and makes some kind of, um, yeah, where is that cat? So, um, so generally, we're just excited to have you all here. I think, um, Ashley, are we going to take it over to questions now? Absolutely. Thank you for all that great information. Um, for the students who are joining us, please feel free to use the chat feature or the Q&A. But the first question from Catherine is, can you major in public relations and minor in business and marketing? Absolutely. Um, there's a great overlap between marketing and communication. So I actually have quite a few students who go back and forth between the two, either majoring in public relations and minoring in business and marketing or majoring in marketing and minoring in PR. Um, so either way you look at it, those two go hand in hand and would make a really good uh, pair for your degree as a whole. I would say that's the number one double major now with graphic design is business and marketing. Um, there's a huge m movement now to have that. Uh, a lot of students are doing it or majoring in graphic design, minoring in business administration. So I'm seeing some interesting senior projects out of that, some great portfolios, and it's really nice to see that overlap too. Thank you. So how are you each interacting with your students while having to be remote? Um, Does anyone else want to take that? Go ahead, Nick. I can take that. Um, so I think that, you know, uh, we're, we're in a communications program. Uh, this is our wheelhouse. Um, and so the way that we're 
taking it on is is we're, we we've thought I think a lot of our classes have a lot to do with how how do you manage things online? How do you work through these different mediums? Um, so what we're doing is uh, we will either meet on Zoom, something similar to this. Uh, some of us are broadcasting um, uh, our, our lectures. Uh, um, as some of us are using online forms, a mixture of all three. Um, but it is, I think, a quite a dynamic experience. Um, it's a different experience. And any educator uh, in any college is having to grapple with problems. Um, but I feel as if we're, we're doing really well with the solution. Some of the best uh, conversations that I've had in, in my entire time teaching has, has, has occurred online. Um, and I think uh, in terms of preparedness uh, for the future, it, 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 we're definitely prepared. We're, we're, we're enjoying the process. We want to get back uh, to uh, uh, being you know, one on one. Uh, with uh, students, um, but you know, today I had uh, 15 one-on-one -on -one meetings uh, over video, so uh, that that happens um, also. May I jump on that? Yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, answer away. The other thing that I wanted to mention was that while we're physically separated, I I get. I was going to say the sense from my students, but they have said amongst themselves and to me that while, while this has made the necessity for a different way of doing things, that they appreciate the sense of community that we're still able to nurture amongst our students. Um, they've gone and done other things themselves, like creating their own little social media groups to keep connected. Um, and the other thing that I wanted to mention, outside of the classroom, we're still doing other things that the college you know, requires, that our students require, like doing our usual advising, academic advising, professional advising. And while I would prefer to do that one-on-one -on -one in my office, we're just making the best of it. Um, and it allows for, I think, some good reflection and the ability to follow up with questions or whatever. Thank you both. We have some great questions rolling in. So um, one student has asked, are there any communication based clubs other than the graphic design club? Yes, there are. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll just mention, I mentioned uh, Lambda Pi Eta, which is the, the communication honorary uh, society. Uh, we also do have uh, a newspaper and radio station on campus, so there are uh, opportunities for um, some participation in student media as well. Uh, I'm also finding, not to go back, I, I don't want to be a, a one-note pony, but uh, we're also uh, starting to get some communication students that are doing some sports broadcasting as well, um, mm -hmm. doing live stream calling, play-by-play -play and that sort of thing on uh, some of the live stream broadcasts. So there are de definitely some uh, opportunities to get involved in all kinds of different things. And I don't know, maybe Colleen, do you want to say something about, uh, there's a PR club also? Yeah, there's um, Public Relations Student Society of America, which works with a, with Public Relations um, Society of America, which is located out of Milwaukee. Uh, so we have a chapter on campus where students can join and have opportunities to network with people in Milwaukee and Chicago um, and have internships and learn more about public relations and communications as a whole. And Harry, who asked that question, if you want to start another club at Carthage, it's really easy to start a club. I mean, there's a Quidditch club. There's all these clubs that um, if you have enough people interested, you can start it. Um, I have students who started a photography club, the ones I just took to Costa Rica. They all decided they just wanted to keep taking pictures together. So we plan to keep taking pictures when we get back. And they're still emailing right now. We're emailing photographs to each other. So that's really nice. And when students, I, was, I would second that too. When there's students that come through that are interested in, in something, there was like a film uh, society a, a few years ago that uh, there were just students that were interested in it. So there's, that's a great thing about a small school. If you have an interest, you can really um, do something about it. You know, you can really uh, participate in anything that you're interested in. Thank you. Can students use the computer labs during the day when classes are not in session? 
Yes, Alyssa, the computer labs, um, when classes are in session, you can usually go in. It's a teacher, um, it's teacher preferred. You have to ask them usually if that's okay, but I haven't met a professor that doesn't let a student in to use the extra computers. And then at night, the computer labs are open. So um, if we have lab techs in there and you can do work and all day Sunday, um, you can come in and do work. So um, the labs are always available there. And I would mention, by the way, Adobe is giving away free Adobe right now until July something. So if you already have a Carthage email, I can send you that information where you could play around with Adobe for free till July 6th or something. So, um, so that's kind of nice. We're hoping they keep extending it because that is nice to have free Adobe. Mm -hmm. Great. So one student has asked, how do you go about doing a double major in communications and digital media and graphic design? And could you do a minor in film and new media as well? May I address that? Mm -hmm. All yours. Okay. So a, a double major is possible, um, not only within our department, but a, a major in our department and any other major across the campus. Um, so graphic design you could major in, you could also major in communication or public relations. Those are what's offered as majors within our department. So how you would go about it is simply declaring the two minors um, and you can see what courses are required for each. Um, although we have three majors, really three areas, um, all of our students take a common fundamentals group of courses. These are three courses that we feel are most needed for all of our students across the board. Visual communication, human communication, and public speaking. These are the tools that a PR professional, a graphic designer, a sports journalist, a filmmaker will need, okay? So um, there's a little bit of sharing and overlap of those um, fundamental courses. Um, the rest are required courses and or electives. Did I answer that question, Shelley and Ethan? Could you also do a minor in film and new media as well? Yes. We do want to make sure that um, certain courses cannot be counted in two different places, but that's what we work with with our students, um, you know, through advising and doing that sort of thing. Just a little bit follow up, just a little bit confusion on declaring two minors. Oh, so when a student comes to a school, usually, if they're decided, declaring a major is simply um, letting the registrar's office know that this is the program that you want to study. Okay, so if I wanted to be a math major, um, I would declare a math major. <laughs> Those who know me know that's not where my my strengths are. Um, and so it's a matter of clicking a form in the online portal. And students are welcome to take the time, explore courses, expand your horizons, figure out what lights your passion. We have students who decide a major maybe even into their second year who change majors um that's the beauty of it right did that help clarify and for along with that question we have a lot of people and resources in place from your student success advisors that you'll meet with your first year faculty advisors so there's a lot of people here to help you in developing that four-year plan with the majors and minors that you've chosen so this is a question about computers. What type of computer do you recommend for graphic design? That is such a good Jose question because he's all about the hardware. And again, he's, his mic isn't working. So um, I would say a MacBook Pro, you know, obviously a Macintosh um, because it's really important to have 
The PCs are out there, they're cheaper, but generally accepted is the Mac in the graphic design world due to the visual imagization. It's just easier, it's more beautiful on a Mac. My husband has a PC, we fight about it all the time. All right, so um, I think a MacBook Pro um, would be your best bet. It's not required because again, you can get in and use the computer labs and there is a computer lab also in the library I would mention. I forgot to mention that, um, Alyssa that asked. There's a computer lab in the library that has um, Macs in it as well. And there's another lab in Straz, I believe, that has, um, it has PCs that has Adobe Suite on it as well. So there's a variety of opportunities on campus to do that. But I would say um, whatever you could afford um, along the lines of a MacBook Pro um, would be best. Yeah. Great. Lynn, with the follow-up to the major question, is the dual major, is that something that can be done within four years? For most students, a double major in, in any combination of majors is doable in four years, assuming a couple things. The student takes a standard course load every semester, takes advantage of J terms. Um, it, it does depend on when a student declares a major. For example, if somebody decided in their last year to start another major, that student may not be able to finish in those four years. But given usual circumstances and usual course loads, it's very doable. While in addition, finishing all the gen ed requirements and also um, any additional electives, but usually if somebody declares a second major or a minor or two, their electives then become fulfillment of those additional degrees. Wonderful. Please keep these great questions coming. You know, what are your guys' background? What did you do before Carthage? Math. Not math, no. Uh, <laughs> sure. Um, somebody asked real quick if the, about on-site tours, so I want to make sure that we get to that too. But um, so um, I worked as a graphic designer in Chicago and Missouri for a number of years because I wanted to get background knowledge for my students. So I was the graphic designer at Potbelly Sandwich Works. Um, I did work for Haagen Dazs, for Motorola, for Guinness, a lot of fun drinking and eating places. Um, so that's, I, I wanted to get experience and just recently, by the way, I had a sabbatical. So I took a semester off and I got to work full time as a graphic designer to get more recent experience for my students, which was amazing. So um, that's kind of my background. Um, anybody else want to take it away? My background is in writing. Um, so I have many publications uh, that I've built up over the last 18 years or so. I don't want to age myself, so I won't tell you how long <laughs> I've been writing and being published. Um, so I built up uh, quite a list of publications and I've taught writing classes for years and years and I did some public relations work as well um, as an independent contractor during those years. Uh, so that's my background coming into being, you know, in public relations. Um. Before uh, I came here, I worked uh, as an artist. Um, I did uh, a lot of work on Capitol Hill, uh, making documentaries. Um, I also uh, worked for the New York Times for a period. Um, and uh, now I'm really happy to be here at Carthage. And the Blue Man Group, you can't not mention. And, and I used to be a Blue Man in the Blue Man Group, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That was my that was my uh, that was my uh, my nighttime uh, my moonlighting job. Uh, so that was my gig there. Uh, still a little blue. Still a little blue sometimes. So yeah, yeah. a little a lot of nonverbal communication happened. <laughs> I, worked, I, I did a little bit of work in uh, television news and and in uh, television sports before I before I came to Carthage. Um, I worked in the production truck for. Uh, sports production broadcasts and also in the newsroom a little bit kind of in all kinds of behind the scenes sort of roles and uh, I now work more as a print journalist so I do some online um, writing about uh, soccer and social media and that kind of stuff so I've sort of transitioned from television into uh, into digital media. And John also uh, has been doing screenwriting and has had his, his work uh, at uh, 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 
reviewed at, at Sundance. So he's, he's awesome. So we all <laughs> connect. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. I, I do a little bit of screenwriting, too. <laughs> yeah, not that I'm awesome. <laughs> but I, I do, I mean, I'm interested in screenwriting. I, I did get a, get a chance to work with Sundance on my last uh, screenplay, which was really exciting, too. So thank you, Nick. That's very good. So do you have, like, Robert Redford's number on speed dial, John? <laughs> text him. He's, yeah. on, uh, he's on the other line. Let me... Uh... <laughs> um, I'll throw in mine. I, I have been teaching for a very long time, showing my age. Um, and I'm, I'm sort of what's called a generalist and I teach communication theory type courses. Um, it complements my personal research, particularly in the areas of nonverbal communication, gender communication, um, and communication and aging. So that's where my passions have been. Uh, in addition to that, I've done a good bit of just sort of general media consulting, helping um, individuals and organizations put together their marketing materials, their persuasive messages to their publics. Um, so I like keeping my hands in on that. Could I take a moment and address a question that, that we missed on the chat, please? Absolutely. Yeah. So there's a few questions coming in that I was going to get to. I did want to address the question about the campus visits. Um, we are hoping that after the Safer at Home is set to expire for Kenosha County here on May 26th, that we will have some options in providing individual um, or like family um, tours. Uh, they wouldn't be large groups, but we are looking at plans to hopefully do that along with offering virtual opportunities for families too. So fingers crossed that we will be able to do so and do so safely here beginning in June. So one of the questions that came in is how do you work with students who took a foreign language major and have to study abroad? Um, so a foreign, a student who, who majors in one of the modern languages is required to study abroad. I've had CDM majors who are doing, or, or minors also, um, doing some of their coursework abroad as well. And so we work with these students to see what um, courses they might take while they're abroad that could fill some of their other or substitute some of their other requirements. Is, is that what the question is pertaining to? I think Alyssa may be asking if she's doing a double major, for example, you know, doing a foreign language and then something from communications, graphic design or public relations. Could she still fit that in with having to do that semester abroad? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I had a student who was a Chinese and graphic design double major and she went abroad and we found an internship for her in China, actually, and that was a great experience for her and she graduated on time. Um, she also was, uh, did music too. She was very, very busy. Um, so there's absolutely the opportunity with proper planning and laying out the coursework that that's a great opportunity to be unique. And I think that's what's great is to find that unique aspect of what you love, you know, and what you enjoy to um, then pursue that um, in a career. Great. One question that was asked just a little bit ago is about a speech team on campus. Do we have anything along those lines? We do not. We currently do not. Um, I was speaking with a prospective student, uh, well, before spring break and all this happened about that. Um, I know that these are great opportunities for students in their high school career to participate in forensics or some other um, form of a speech team. We currently don't have that. However, if there is interest, it might even start as a club if there's enough interest in doing that. Competitive intercollegiate speech competition is, um, you know, uh, it's an undertaking, right? Um, but it has to start with student interest. So I'm sorry to say we don't have that currently, but that's not to say that it might not be a, a possibility in the future. 
I would add too, just real quickly, we do have um, Model United Nations, I say, which I know I there's some crossover between speech and debate and Model UN. Um, mm -hmm. uh, the professor that I teach with uh, in political science, Professor Roberg, uh, does a Model United Nations program. They go abroad uh, every year, I think. They were in, uh, I think, Israel last year and Scotland the year before. So they do some really interesting and unique international travel. Um, there's also a mock trial uh, program mm -hmm. um, that's run, I believe, through the business department. So there are some kind of other opportunities for some kind of competitive communication related activities, although we don't have speech and debate. Great, thank you. What is the placement rate of graduates in public relations? And what are you seeing as average salaries for that field? Um, so I, I also do not do math. So I can't really <laughs> just like math that for you. I wish I could. Um, however, I will say that it is very rare uh, that one of my public relations students leaves Carthage without a job. So they are definitely working within the field right out of school. Um, there's quite a few internships to get them started in that. And there's quite a few big PR firms around um, that are also hiring and looking at students and, and consider Carthage students to be very high quality students. Um, so again, it's just very rare to me that I have a student who leaves without a job related to the field. Um, partially because in public relations, we do focus on communication skills, you know, some of the psychology, some of the sociology. Um, we've got the good writing skills. We've got the good um, speaking skills that we're working on. And so they're very well-rounded students and public relations aspects can be used in a lot of different businesses and fields. So I would say the average salary that people are, you know, kind of entering the workforce is around 35 to 40,000 um, within the public relations field itself. And of course that's gonna vary depending on things like if you become a um, wedding planner or an event planner or something like that, you might be doing that more independent or for a smaller company. Um, if you go to work for a nonprofit, which I have a lot of students who really wanna work for nonprofits, um, nonprofits, of course, pay a little less. If you go right into the public relations field um, at a public relations corporation um, or a boutique public relations firm, then you might be making more around the 35 to 40 right off the bat. So I would say, you know, it varies on what aspect of public relations you're entering into. Uh, but very good rate of students getting jobs out of college with their skills that they've learned and the things that they've developed through their public relations background. Awesome. Thank you, Colleen. It looks like we had two little friends join us. John, who are your friends? <laughs> these are, yeah, these are my two dogs. This is, Hi. this is Birdie right here, Lady Bird, and this is Lincoln. We love that they can join us as well. Yeah, so they're just hanging out with us here today. Awesome. <laughs> the question that just came in is, what is a self-designed major? May I? You may. Okay. So a self-designed major is um, an opportunity for a student to work with faculty members and design their own major based on what courses are available at Carthage. Um, it goes through an approval process of the um, appropriate departments and the curriculum approval process and the registrar. Um, and, and we think that that's a really cool idea, Carthage, to, to give that opportunity um, to stu for students to be able to think a little bit outside the box. This would require some initiative and creativity on the part of the student to move forward on that kind of, um, that kind of a, a request. Um, likewise, sometimes there are uh, self-designed minors. Uh, at the beginning of my section, I mentioned that we, we have this new minor in photography, in large part that came out from so many students wanting to do photography as a minor that we were doing them as self-designs. 
when students show enough interest and if the resources are available, it might actually become, quote, an official catalog program that students can undertake. Great, thank you. I think this next question is a great one for us to end our webinar on. And, but the question is, what is the top reason why a student should come to Carthage? Each of you can answer that one. All right, well, I'll go ahead and start. Um, what, my absolute favorite thing about Carthage, so I've taught at, I th think, four or five different schools at this point in my life. Um, and the absolute, my absolute favorite thing about Carthage is the relationships that I build with my students. Because the classes are not so huge, um, and because of the atmosphere that is encouraged and the culture that is encouraged on campus, I feel like I can build personal relationships with my students and, and they with me, um, that we can work together in a better way to pull together their major or minor, uh, whatever it is that we're focusing on together to help them get internships, that kind of thing. Um, and then we just have that personal relationship and they seem to have it with other professors, not just with myself, but they have it with other professors as well, which just builds an incredible learning environment that I'm constantly thankful for. Um, so I think that's one of the best things that I've seen at Carthage and reasons I would go to Carthage. I think I'll, I'll take it. Um, I think that every institution has a culture uh, of who your teachers are going to be. Um, and at Carthage, we have an open door culture. Um, and that means that if any student has an interest that they want to explore that isn't offered, or if they want to take one thing and connect it with another, our job does not end in the classroom. Uh, most of the teaching, I'd argue, happens in those in-between spaces uh, where we're having those conversations, where we're engaging with you as students um, to really explore your ideas and explore your dreams. And to me, also having worked at other institutions, I don't see that culture um, at other places. Um, and if, you know, I can't help you, I know a professor who can. And I know that we can work together to make sure that you're getting what you need. You guys answered it really well. Can I just say what they said? Because that's, that's what I kind of wanted to say was, I mean, really the, the professor interaction, like we will be more involved in your life than you will want us to be, probably. <laughs> like you don't come to class and we'll find you, you know what I mean? And, and just when I showed you the end of the, the visuals and I showed you Marco's little icons, you know, Marco really loved creating vector icons and I knew that's what he loved. And so I would just keep feeding him ideas because he'd be like, what can I do now? And I'm like, Disney princesses, I don't know, you know, um, any of the books you like, um, Game of Thrones. So he just kept making and making. So we were, we had a great relationship of back and forth of what we can do, what, what he can build. And, and I knew that's what he loved. And then when I heard about a job, I told Marco about it. And then Marco applied and got the job. So it's really exciting that we know individually what our students are interested in, what makes them happy, what gives them joy, and we can lead them that way. And that's, that's what we love. And that's why I, in a way, I've, I've enjoyed the virtual world because I get to see my students all the time and I make them turn their cameras on because I hate talking to the little circle with their letter initial, you know. So I, I, I really like that individual attention that we can give them. And I just love that. And I mean, the alumni alone, I think is a big thing. I have so many alumni that are texting me because they want to help right now. What can I do for your seniors? And I had them interviewing seniors and looking at their portfolios to practice, they practice interviewing to see what they can do for them. So I, there's just great opportunities like that. I mean, we're small and we're scrappy is what I would say. We will work really hard for you. Yeah, and I would add to that too. I mean, I, I would second everything that everybody said, but I think what Carthage really has that always amazes me is connections. Yeah. Like I'm always amazed by the connections that, that, we, that we have. Like recently I did for my sports media class when we went online, I did this series of sports uh, marketing alumni interviews with Carthage alumni. And we had people that worked for Miami Dolphins and the Sacramento Kings and the Chicago Fire and NBC Universal. And 
I take this baseball trip to California where we met with the president of the board of trustees who gave us a pool party. And then we uh, met a former commissioner of baseball and two team owners and we went to an agency. You know, I mean, it's like this connection of people that are Carthage both past and, and present, you know, is, is really an amazing network of people to be a part of. So uh, I think I feel lucky to be a part of it. And I think anybody who comes here and, and joins us gets to be a part of that too. I couldn't add anything to what my colleagues have said um, and said so eloquently, but, but I would like to add that um, these folks up here are not just my colleagues, they are my friends. Mm -hmm. And I would say the same of the staff at Carthage, who even in these most difficult times are busting their behinds, trying to help students get through this weird semester. Um, and the reason that I think that that is so important is one, it makes our lives <laughs> so much more pleasant to be able to be around people who, um, who you respect, who you admire, who challenge you, and who stoke my creative and, and you know, scholarly thoughts, you know, and, and help flame those embers. Um, but when I just talk with an, a staff member, because we're both walking from the restroom together, um, there is a palpable connection that oozes into student life <laughs> and for the better is what I'm saying. And, and I'm not sure that happens at a lot of schools. Um, and that is one of the things that I treasure. Thank you all for this wonderful information um, and for all the great questions from our guests here today. And so with this presentation, we will be providing all of the faculty members email addresses if you would like to reach out to them. And then they would also be happy to meet with you individually through Zoom or in person once we're able to when the Someday. And I would say Shelly and Ethan, I know a communication graphic design double major that alumni that you could talk to um, that is doing really well. I mentioned it was on the list. Tyler Jump. What does he do now? He's like working for Harvard or something. Um, let me find the list. He is. Yeah, he's at Harvard now. He was with the with the Peace Corps for years, but now I think he's working. I think it's at the Harvard School of Public Health, maybe. Yeah, with Harvard and the Smithsonian. So he's just amazing. If you want to talk with him, um, yeah. Absolutely, we can get you guys connected. So, we again, we thank you for joining us today, and you know, please enjoy your evening. Thanks thank for talking, everyone. Bye, bye, Lisa. Bye, Maddie. Bye, everybody. <laughs>